What up, what up, what up, what up with it? It is your boy, P.E. to the P.E. Positive Energy, a.k.a. Bud Buds, a.k.a. H.I., a.k.a. Regan the Vegan, because I don't want no beef. <laughs> What's going on with y'all, man? It's first tote, man. Get up, fire up, see what's up. I wake up this morning. Shit went down. Kawhi to the Clippers. Not only that, they traded for Paul George. Which really just messed up my playoff predictions. Not too much, though. Now, I know yesterday, or my last video, whatever, I gave a playoff rundown. So, now, I had eight OKC in the group, in the bottom group of about six teams, six or seven teams that was fighting for the last spot. I don't think... They position has moved any. They still got a chance to fight for that spot. But they'll probably be fighting, fighting for the eighth spot instead of instead of a higher seed or something like that. You feel me? So, but still think Lakers is a team to beat. They signed Danny Green. They re-signed motherfucking KCP, Contavious Cole, Will Pope, more shooting. Re-signed JaVale Gee McGee. So, Lakers will be throwing out a starting lineup of JaVale McGee, Kyle Kuzma, Anthony Davis, Danny Green, LeBron James. LeBron at the point, Danny at the two, Kuzma at the three. Uh... Anthony Davis at the four and McGee at the five. Formidable. Nobody can really match up with that. I don't care about Kawhi and Paul George on the Clippers. That will take them fighting for maybe the three spot. Okay. Matter of fact, I might be wanting to drop Houston down a little bit instead of Portland. But I still think Houston number two. Between Portland and the Clippers for the three and four spots. The Lakers still the number one team in the West to me. I don't think nobody can still fuck with the Lakers with AD. Okay, y'all got Kawhi and Paul George. But Kawhi and Paul George ain't better than LeBron and AD. Sorry. Durant and Kyrie ain't better than LeBron and AD. Bronny and LeBron are the best pair in, in, in the league. And now all you got is really pairs in the league. Two, two, two superstar teams, but the role players are the way the NBA should be. The NBA is back to being the NBA again. All that super team shit is out the door. Boys is ready to suit up and ball. All these LeBron fans, they fucking crushed that the Lakers didn't get Kawhi. Because the LeBron fans just want LeBron to have the easiest pass to the title so they can try to say he better than Jordan. But it, he'll never be better than Jordan. I just need to stop it with that argument. That ship is gold. There's no way he could catch you. It's, uh, he can win the next three straight, bro. He'll be 6-6, six and six, and to me, he won't pass Kobe. Let alone, I'm, I might put him past... Uh, I would put him past Magic. Cause if Magic was 5-4 and four and he was 6-6, six and six, I would put him past Magic. Not past Kobe. Five and two, not past Duncan. He ain't better than Duncan or Kobe. And those two boys played on the same team for their for their whole career. So 
Kobe and Duncan get super slept on and underrated as how great they was. To be that great for one team for that long is truly a remarkable accomplishment. That's why you don't see it in today's NBA. Facts. It is what it is. So, yeah. Ah, shit. Got my little weed thing. Hold my phone up. My grinder. So, I got to grind it with my fingers. Let me see. So, yeah, man, the West is going to be stacked, man. Like I said, uh, I got the Lakers. They got a really, really, like, me personally, as a Lakers fan, I'm still super excited about our team. When we get Daddy Green and KCP, so now we got the shooters. So, if you take, even if we, you know, in crunch time, our five players is probably going to be KCP. On the wing, they're going to have fucking, what you call it, down low. JaVale McGee down low. I mean, not JaVale. Anthony Davis and Kuhn was at the four and the five. KCP and Green on the wings and LeBron running the point. I just see this is a high dosage of LeBron at the point this year. He's going to prolong his career. He needs to take more of a step back. And even though we didn't. Get Kawhi, I think we still need to do that to let Kuzma grow. LeBron should be the third option. That's facts. Y'all can, LeBron haters can say I'm hating. LeBron lovers can say I'm hating. Because anything you say against LeBron, any kind of realistic uh, assessment that, that points out his flaws, gets, gets met with uh, your hater. How could you hate? Motherfucker told me because I thought KD was better than LeBron that I was hating. It's fucking ludicrous. Like, how the fuck? Because I think somebody better than this dude I'm hating. Did I say LeBron ain't worth two cents? He should have never got high. He overrated. He this, he that. No, but if I tell you he don't make his team, his star teammates better and then I go show you numbers to where the stars numbers are not the same it's not hate me that's showing you what the numbers is saying bro it's, that's what it is if y'all I mean like y'all just have to realize that as good and great and as talented as LeBron is and he's definitely one of the top 10 players of all time he has his flaws like everybody else. And see that right there? Me By me saying he in the top ten, I'm hating. If I don't say LeBron is the greatest player of all time, I'm hating. I can tell you, no, I judge players by championships and all that. And they try to bring me all these other stats, which is nice and shows that you're a good player in the regular season and all that. That's fine. That is fine. But here to tell you, uh, people, bro, the NBA is not played for stats. You don't play to see how many points you can put up or how many rebounds you can get or how many assists. You, in my harm, Edwards' voice, you play to win the game. Hello? We're here for championships. We're here for about the rings. So, like, let me explain myself, bro. It's not just the rings, okay? You have to be a franchise player, cornerstone player, and put up decent, like put up, put up really good numbers and win championship. See, this is why Kawhi is on his way to be one of the greatest because he won two championships, two different teams. Teams went stacked. He was known as the Dynasty Killer. Won two finals MVPs. He's putting up pretty good numbers. Now, his numbers may not be as big as LeBron's, big as Durant's, big as whatever, but his results are. 
See, it's, it's not about me going out there putting up 30 a game, and seven rebounds, eight assists, and have every single thing, every single play ran for me or everything that happened good with my team got to become through me. No, you got to let your players, your old teammates, contribute where they fit in too so you can get the value out of them. You can't have just one player trying to do everything so don't nobody else know what their role is. You got to have people with indefined roles to do so they can shine and excel in that role. Just like like I said about Dennis Rodman, perfect example. You could put him on the team with Scottie Pippen and Jordan and have three superstar caliber players like that because Dennis Rodman does not need the ball to be effective. Dennis Rodman will grab every rebound, pass the ball. He'll grab it, pull it back out, and run and give the ball. i seen him do it. Run and give the ball to Jordan for the shot. Like, no, bro, I'm here. My role is not to score all these points and grab every rebound and be the double but double me. Which Robin could have did if he wanted to do his role was to play defense and rebound and get the ball to Jordan in the score. Get the ball to Jordan and Pippen the scores. That's just that's basketball. Like when you have like too many too many chefs in the kitchen, you have problems. Take my Lakers back in the day. When we tried to go get Carl Malone and Gary Payton. Wasn't the same because though Carl Malone needed the ball to score, Shaq needed the ball to score, Kobe needed the ball to score. So people, so you you didn't get now to Carl Malone's credit, he played good that year for us and did what he could. But it wasn't the Carl Malone that everybody was used to, that everybody thought it was the old war down Carl Malone. He did good for his age and to help us, but he wasn't the same Stockton and Malone. You know what I'm saying? You can't have that many. It's like you can't have three superstars without a third superstar suffering. Unless that third superstar is a Clay Thompson, Dennis Rodman type who is very good at the role that they play that makes them seem that they is much more tougher than what they really is. So, that being said, the Clippers, with Paul George, they traded a lot to get Paul George. I think it was like five picks. Danilo Garlinaro, uh, Shea Ag Gregarious Alexander, so which was only a little bit of help for uh, Russell Westbrook in OKC. But he had put Danilo, that's the thing about him, he put, he put Paul George in Kevin Durant's place. And Paul George balled out in that spot. Now, Westbrook, I still think he's going to do his thing. Do what he do. Be all right, but it's still going to be tougher for him. L.A. is going to be buzzing with Kawhi and Paul George. I guess they both ended up making it home to L.A. like they wanted. Two L.A. boys. Picked the wrong team, though, boys. I'm happy for you. you at home. you have getting your money. That's a nice pairing, Kawhi and Paul George. Your wing defense is going to be tremendous. Still don't think they have enough to beat the Lakers. I still think LeBron and AD is the favorites. And that's the way that's going to be. So, yeah, man, it's just a little breaking rule to give me a little something rolled up for the day. Is a Clipper. Lakers got Danny Green, Catavius Caldwell Pope, and JaVale McGee. Sign back. We, the Lakers, are ready. We about to do that. So holler at your boy, man. It's your boy, P-E-P-E, -P -E, positive energy. But we can't have peace until we come together as one. One love.